winter months, Mother Nature can pack a punch. And during extreme weather, your knowledge could mean the difference between life and death. That's where the 13 Weather Authority comes in. From blizzards and winter storms to extreme cold and ice storms, we're here to give you the tools to prepare for it all. Project Blizzard starts right now. Good evening and welcome to this 13 News Special Report, Project Blizzard. I'm Chief Meteorologist Alex Kirchner, and in a moment, I'll be joined by meteorologist Claudia Olek. Over the next half hour, we'll explain everything you need to know about severe winter weather, from a look at the forecasting techniques we use to track winter storms to the science behind snow itself. We want you to have the information you need to keep you and your families safe this winter and every winter. First, we start tonight with a relatively new alert for severe winter weather that you may get this season. They are called snow squall warnings. Meteorologist Claudia Olick breaks down how dangerous snow squalls can be. As we begin to move into the winter season, we want to prepare you for all the hazards it may bring. One phenomenon that is not too common but could be very impactful is a snow squall. A snow squall is an intense and short burst of snowfall that happens quickly. They're usually done within an hour, and winds make us up to 50 miles an hour, leading to a number of impacts. You may remember just last February, northern Illinois saw a snow squall move through that even led to a snow squall warning. The bright green and blue colors you see on this radar loop represent heavy bands of snow, courtesy of the National Weather Service Chicago office. The snow squall moved over Rockford and produced 1.2 inches of snow in just 30 minutes. Visibility dropped to near zero due to winds gusting over 50 miles an hour. This is why snow squalls can be so dangerous. They are fast moving and bring dangerous conditions to those on the road. Some refer to snow squalls as miniature blizzards. In a matter of minutes, partly cloudy skies can turn into heavy snow with winds over 50 miles an hour and visibility under a quarter of a mile. If there is any threat of a snow squall in your area, the National Weather Service will issue a snow squall warning. Here are some tips on what to do when you see this kind of warning. If you are at home or at an event, hold off on leaving or heading out, as driving conditions can be very dangerous. If you are driving as a snow squall is passing through, slow down. Turn on your hazard lights so other drivers can see you. Pulling over and waiting it out is also a good option. As the winter season can bring many hazards, especially on the roads, there are a few other alerts to keep in mind. If potentially dangerous winter weather is expected, the following may be issued. The first being a winter weather advisory or a watch, a winter weather warning or a blizzard warning. Add snow squall warning to that list and you are all set for this upcoming winter season. Thanks for that, Claudia. We may have an active winter ahead, giving us more opportunities for storms and snow squalls. The cause of an active winter is from a pretty rare occurrence. La Nina conditions are in place for a third winter in a row. This has only happened twice on record, dating back to the 1950s. So here's how La Nina affects our winters, and if the last two gives us any hints about what lies ahead. When it comes to La Nina conditions, we have to go all the way over to the Pacific Ocean near the equator. Water temperature here affects the weather patterns all over the globe. During a typical La Nina winter, the ocean waters near the equator are colder than usual. This causes the jet stream to rise near Alaska and dip into the lower United States. While portions of the Midwest usually see a colder than usual winter, we here in Wisconsin and Illinois can see a more active winter. Take note about the words more active. This doesn't mean more snow, but rather more chances for storms. Think of this like more darts to throw at the dartboard. Not all of them will hit us, but there are more chances for storms to strike. We had the opportunity to talk to Ricky Castro with the National Weather Service in Chicago. One of his reminders is that a more active winter doesn't always mean more snow. You could have active pre an active storm track, and it just so happens a lot of your events were rain or freezing rain versus more in the form of snow. So that's completely driven by, you know, the storm, the individual storm and the track that it takes. The, does it have a favorable track for heavy snow here in Rockford, or does it miss off to the southeast like last year? This is apparent with the last two winters. The 2020 to 2021 winter was near average for snow, but last winter was well below average for snowfall since the storms kept hitting to our south near Peoria and Chicago. This winter may keep us on our toes where the season could start one way, then finish on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. 
We're looking at variability in terms of week to week, day to day. You can have really large changes, and I would say while every winter is going to have changes like that, uh, the La Nina type winter is often more prone to having larger swings. For now, be ready for a more active winter. Whether we see more storms or not all depends on how close the darts get to our neck of the woods this year. The only other times on record that we've seen three La Ninas in a row were from 1973 to 76 and from 1998 to 2001. The results varied a lot from winter to winter for both temperature and snow amounts. Since there isn't a clear pattern and it's a pretty small sample size, we can't draw any conclusions on how this third La Nina in a row will go. But as mentioned a second ago, we do know this winter will be a lot more active. Now, as part of an active winter, we want to know as soon as possible how many inches of snow may fall within a given storm. However, the forecast may still be murky a day or two ahead of the storm. Meteorologist Claudia Olek shows you what we look for when tracking storms and putting together a forecast. In terms of storm tracks, there are three source regions that most common winter storms originate from. Each track is different in nature, and where they develop and track can ultimately make a big difference. The first type of winter storm is nicknamed name an Alberta Clipper. This system typically develops near the U.S.-Canada border and pushes through the Great Lake region. These storms typically bring lighter snow totals due to their quick speed. And next up is the Panhandle Hook. This usually is a powerful low that develops near the Panhandle of Texas or Oklahoma before eventually hooking towards the Midwest. This type is notorious for bringing freezing rain. According to a study done by the University of Illinois, over 50 percent of severe winter storms are panhandle hooks. The third type of storm is known as a Colorado low. This storm typically develops on the lee side of the Rocky Mountains near Colorado. Precipitation tends to be snow because of the cold track that remains along it, keeping that cold air in place. Where the cooler air can be found in the atmosphere can also play a key role in what kind of snow we may see. That's why meteorologists key in on specific spots in the atmosphere. There is a specific spot that is most favorable for snowflake development. It's known as the snow growth zone or dendritic growth zone. If there is enough humidity and lift in this level, we know if snow or even heavy snowfall is on the way. Data from weather balloons and forecast soundings give us a look at if the atmosphere lines up. Analyzing weather models can help raise or lower our confidence in how a storm event may play out. From there, we can determine the snow ratio, as that helps figure out how much snow may fall. Drier snow leads to a lot more accumulation with the same amount of liquid, so getting down the ratio is key. Knowing whether we get a powdery snow or slushy snow helps determine the impacts we may face as well. Because small changes can make all the difference, the forecast can shift a lot from 10 days out to right before the storm hits. Five days or more out from an event, we can see general patterns that may hint at snowfall. Three to four days out, we can determine if a storm may happen. But exactly where and when it may occur can still vary by as much as a couple days or a couple states away. At this point, it's a heads up that snow could be on the way. Within one to two days away from a storm, the forecast becomes a lot clearer. A storm is expected, but the details may still change. The storm's location can vary by 50 or even 150 miles, so don't take the forecast as a definite just yet. Within 24 hours of a storm, the details can come out. You can get forecast details like snow amounts, location, and timing. You may want to know how much snow will get days out from a storm. But snow forecasting is very complex, and details remain murky until close to the event. Knowing all this, remember to get your forecasts from trusted sources like WREX or the National Weather Service. Claudia, thanks. Coming up next on Project Blizzard, we give you an inside look at the command center responsible for keeping the highways clear throughout the winter season. Plus, find out what makes snowflakes unique. That's all ahead after the break. Welcome back to this 13 News special report, Project Blizzard. Snow is an interesting type of precipitation. It can be pretty. It can also create dangerous conditions. Here's a look at how the highlight of the winter season gets made. It all starts with some dust and supercooled water droplets. When the supercooled water hits the dust particles, they form an ice crystal. From there, water droplets in the clouds freeze onto the ice crystal, forming new crystals and eventually creating the six-sided snowflake we're familiar with. Snowflakes always have six arms or sides to them. 
How those arms shape up is determined by the temperature. We see needle-like arms at 23 degrees and flat plate-like crystals at 5 degrees. Since the environment changes as the snowflake falls, the arms may grow one way, then change and form a different way a second or a minute later. This is why snowflakes look unique because they all take slightly different paths from each other to the ground. On the way down, crystals may keep growing depending on the conditions. If the crystals fall through cold and dry air, they tend to form a fluffy or powdery snow good for skiing. If the air is full of moisture and even a little above freezing, the crystals melt a little on the edges. This allows the crystals to stick to each other even more, creating big clumpy snowflakes. In fact, our heaviest snows tend to happen when the air is a few degrees above freezing. There is a myth that the temperature can get too cold for snow. There is a relationship between air temperature and moisture. The colder the air gets, the less water vapor it can hold. However, you'd have to get down below minus 40 degrees before the moisture is so low that not even snow can occur. We can still create snowfall with enough lift, even below minus 40 degrees. Now, what happens if you need snow, but it doesn't come naturally from the sky? You can create snow artificially using special snow-making fans. Creating ice crystals, then mixing them with a high-pressure jet of water can create nearly a foot of snow an hour when below freezing. Now, once snow showers kick in, it's time to fire up the snow plows and get the snow off of our roads. 13 News' William Ingalls gives you a look at how they get the job done in Stevenson County. Roads are clear for now, but workers across our area, like here in Stevenson County, are hard at work preparing for the winter season. We make a stockpile of chips and sand that we mix, and we put chloride on that so that it does not freeze during the winter. Then we mix that with a salt. And those preps go all the way until the moment snow starts to fly. Usually the day before, we make sure that the trucks are all ready. Sometimes we take the plows off for other operations. We put the plows back on, make sure everything's working. When it comes to pre-treating roads, Stevenson County generally stays away, since cars will move the salt off the road before it can do its job. But there are certain spots that get a little extra love to make sure people stay safe on the road. A lot of times we'll pre-treat areas that are curves or shaded areas that don't get the sunlight and the, the heat is not in the road or stop signs. Uh, a lot of times we'll treat hills that, are, that can be really slick. We'll pre-treat those spots. Pre-treating is one of the reasons you might see a plow driving around without its blade on the ground to move snow, but another common one is that the plow isn't on a road the county covers. They don't know what we're doing and why the plow is not down is because we're not on a road that's ours. Um, sometimes we're driving on a state road that's not our road and if the state just treated the road with salt, we plow it right off and it doesn't even have a chance to work. What is universal no matter what road you're on is how you should drive around plows because what can cost you a few minutes by staying behind a plow could save you a serious crash. I've seen more people that have died or gotten in serious accidents because they tried to pass a plow and you can't see. The, the snow dust that's coming off the back of the plow and the truck, is it's impossible to see through, so stay back there. And when you do see plows on the road, keep in mind that the drivers are often out on long shifts. They, if they start at 4, by the time we quit, and a lot of times we'll quit anywhere between 8 and 9 at, in the evening, those guys have been in there a long time. They've been in there for 12 plus hours. That's in there. The fatigue sets on them. That so take it slow when the snow falls and let the professionals do their work to keep you safe on the roads this winter. For your 13 Weather Authority, I'm William Ingalls. If the plows haven't come through yet, remember to take things easy while driving. So no sharp turning and accelerating and allow extra space when stopping. Now last season, the city of Rockford held a contest and you got to help pick out the name of the city's snow plows. So we can thank Notorious B.I.G., Sled Zeppelin, Plowzilla, Darth Blader, and Plowabunga for clearing the streets for us this winter. By the way, you can track the snow plows by going to the City of Rockford's website and downloading the Snow and Ice app. Plow trucks had their work cut out for them during the state line's top snowstorms. Here are the top three storms to hit Rockford. In 2011, between January 31st and February 2nd, 15.1 inches of snow fell in the Rockford area. 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts created crippling blizzard conditions, making it almost impossible to be out on the roads. Our number two snowstorm was all the way back in 1926. On March 30th to 31st, the area saw 16 inches of snow. 
And finally, the number one snowstorm in Rockford. You likely won't remember this one. That's because it happened in 1918. 16.3 inches of snow fell on Rockford between January 6th and 7th. Still to come tonight on Project Blizzard, when it comes to our warming planet, this doesn't necessarily mean more mild winters. How climate change could contribute to more extreme winters. We'll be right back. Welcome back. When we think of climate change, we often think of a warming planet, but it doesn't necessarily mean milder winters. In fact, it could be the opposite. Meteorologist Claudia Olick breaks down what a warming planet means for the snowstorms here in the Midwest. For many decades, we have seen variation in terms of how much snowfall is recorded each winter. But with a warming planet, there may be some effects seen within our own winter storms here in the Midwest. There is some variation that is naturally occurring, but in the coming decades, this natural variation is going to be overwhelmed by uh, human-induced climate change and its, its tendency to warm the atmosphere and reduce the amount of snowfall. The evidence found in research does suggest that climate change may lead to less snowfall, but you might have seen some sources state otherwise. For example, more moisture in the atmosphere could lead to more snowfall during snowstorms, but this isn't entirely true. Warmer air can contain more moisture before that moisture falls out as precipitation. So that means that we do have a potential for heavier precipitation as the climate warms. So that's a pretty clear relationship for rainfall, but for snowfall, it's a bit more challenging because you have the constraint of it being cold enough for it to snow. So there will be some areas that do receive more snowfall because even with the um, warming climate, they're still cold enough to snow and they'll have even more moisture in that warmer climate. Even with the warming climate, some places may still see the same amount of snow, if not more, given there being more moisture. But that might not be the case here in the Midwest. Those of us here in the Midwest are more likely to experience more rain events that would have been snowfall in the past. So as the Earth's climate continues to warm, we will still see our winter storms come through the area. Some may just bring rain instead of snow. Besides impacting the amounts of snow, what about the lengths of our winter seasons or colder temperatures? Many have thought that cold air will go away with a warming globe or that we may see more intense cold air outbreaks. Over the last 70 years that the winds in the upper levels have weakened somewhat and that allows cold air to come down from the Arctic uh, to us here in the central United States. Some of these changes are already happening, like large systems transporting more tropical air to the Arctic regions, which in turn causes some of the cold air to move south, potentially leading to more roller coaster like forecasts with both very warm and very cold air possible in a short amount of time. What we'll see is more variation between uh, cold and warm air going back and forth throughout the winter. Um, which we might think that we see now, but is something that will be uh, more prominent in future climates. With variations becoming more likely in the future, along with other impacts, we will still see snowstorms and cold weather outbreaks here in the Midwest. They may just not be as frequent. We may also end up with winters with just one or two storms that bring us all the snow for that season in just those two events. As changes happen within our climate, winters in the Midwest may become shorter, warmer, and bring less snowfall. These effects won't be felt or seen immediately, just something that may happen over time with a warming climate. For your 13 Weather Authority, I'm Claudia Ola. Thanks to that, Claudia. We are seeing some results from climate change in real time. According to Climate Central, winters on average are 5 degrees warmer than 50 years ago. And when you look at Rockford's top 10 warmest winters, half of those have occurred within the last 20 years, which is pretty recent. So how can you help? You can spread the word, urge your representatives locally and nationally to help fight climate change and try to be as sustainable as possible with the energy you use, the products you buy, and the food you eat, and hopefully don't waste. Now, with all these factors in play, the big question is, what will we see this winter? We'll have the answer to that question in a moment. It's time now to take a look at what this winter may bring. As we explained earlier, we can't get into specifics. We can, however, provide a general outlook on what you can expect this winter. First up, La Nina is in play for a third winter in a row. That means we could see an active winter. We have more chances for storms, but it all depends on where that active storm track sets up and how warm or cold the weather is when the storms track through. A more active weather can lead to more snow, but we also could see more rain or freezing rain and less snow if there's not enough cold air. So it all depends on how the weather specifically sets up. By the way, Rockford's typical snow range for a typical winter is 
26 inches to 48 inches. So usually we fall in between that range. We might end up on the higher end if we see many more snowstorms because of that active snow track. Now, La Nina may be pointing us towards a colder than usual winter. It's only a slight lean, however, with a 34% chance for colder weather. Keep in mind, however, that this is an overall three-month outlook. We will still see week-to-week -week changes, including Arctic air visiting from time to time. Now, there are a handful of smaller patterns to keep an eye on that either reinforce cold airflow from Canada or help keep it bottled up elsewhere. This is one of those uh, smaller patterns, kind of an example of an Arctic oscillation right now pointing towards negative as we go through December. That could mean more cold air flowing south. So as a result of these smaller patterns, we are leaning towards a mainly cold and drier December. Now I'll have to wait and see if these influences stick around or if they flip as we go deeper into the winter season. Now remember, if we end up with a warm winter, we still have those days or a week where the wind chill is well below zero. How many days depends on how much La Nina and these smaller patterns influence the weather from week to week. Now the team of meteorologists here at WREX will keep you up to speed all winter long to keep you informed on what's ahead and any dangerous winter threats that may be on the way. So stay with us as we go deeper into the winter season. And that's all we have for you tonight on this special report, Project Blizzard. We hope this information can help keep you and your family prepared for winter weather. Be sure to visit our website, WREX.com, for a more detailed look at the science behind forecasting. And parents, heads up, on our website, you can find a booklet for kids. For now, though, we want to thank you for joining us. We hope you have a safe winter season. Good night. Thank you for watching Project Blizzard.